Look at the crushing power. Wow. There it is. I don't know what we're going to do with it. We're going to put it in the parts pile right now. Can you imagine how boring this summer would have been, you know, if the tornado wouldn't have ruined the whole yard? Oh, that would have been just so relaxing. Well, I'm out spraying uh, edible beans, second pass, second post to merge pass. About a week ago, we sprayed first post. That was uh, Bashazon and Bassagran, a couple chemicals, uh, along with a bunch of different adjuvants. <clears throat> we do spray uh, edible beans fairly close together on their post to merge because you cannot let those weeds get too big. Uh, the chemicals we're using are pretty weak compared to your more modern Roundup and Enlist and Liberty chemicals. These beans are not tolerant to that. There's not the genetic traits that allow us to use those stronger chemicals. That would be nice, but this is what we got. So this post-emerge I'm using Fomesifin. Um, it's a chemical we used to spray on our soybeans. It's junk, uh, for lack of better words, but let me put you guys up here for a little turnaround. It does work. It will burn the beans a little bit. Um, not enough to cause too much lasting harm, but on a hot day, you got to be careful so that you don't mix the uh, potion too hot, because then you can really burn the beans. And the goal, the goal is to obviously kill the weeds. The beans will bounce back. Um, before the weeds can grow back and then this will be our last post emerge so we want those beans to canopy or to shade out the floor uh, shade out the field so that new weeds can't uh, grow through that these beans do look fantastic so I kinda forgot how quick edible beans grow uh, we plant them last and we harvest them first so they have a pretty short growing season or maturity but these things have really shot up. We've had some ideal temps, gotten the moisture we need. Uh, we're, we're a little on the dry side still, but things are better than they were back in April when all it was doing was raining and freezing and sleeting. And Well, we're still having tornadoes come through, it seems, but we, we'll get there. We did have a windstorm oh, a couple weeks ago, 50, 60 miles an hour, took out more trees. Any tin that was loose, it threw that around in the yard and caused more havoc, but that's life. Ain't that right, Mother Nature? Huh? You done? We need sun. Look at Brody go. He's so slow. Come on, Brody. Pass me quicker. Got spraying to do. Come on, IVT. Got spraying to do. There we go. Okay, I just wrapped up edible bean spraying for a uh, second post. That will be the last post-emerge herbicide uh, pass we do. We will uh, come back with some fungicide, probably two passes, maybe more. Uh, the main goal with that is to keep white mold down. Edible beans, you can get really bad white mold and then that'll transfer over into a soybean year in that same field and it becomes a endless battle. So we're gonna try to stay on top of that right away since we're starting edible beans this year. Um, and then the last thing you do with edible beans is you desiccate them. You go out there and you actually kill them. Uh, they are already mostly dried up and dead. I think it's 80% of the leaves need to be brown or fallen off when you do desiccate. But we spray the whole field just to even everything up to make for a smoother harvest. Uh, make sure there isn't any green stems or any issues like that. That will bring dust in and dirt into the combine uh, with that moisture and dirty the beans. You know, we, we're trying to get the highest quality because then they can put them on the shelves in bags uh, versus in cans. So the cleaner the beans, the better. Well, the sprayers are back on the yard. I believe we're caught up on spraying until next week, which brings us to sweaty outside work 
right? I'm getting the tight feeling. In your chest from the heat? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, boys, are we ready? How do you want to do it? Well, someone's got to get hoisted up. We need to unbolt the bracing, get that strap wrapped around the top, unbolt the base, and might need a forklift to pull the bottom out. I don't know, we got to take this off because that is not ruined. But the bin is, well, as you can see, crushed and junk. Up we go! Look at the crushing power. Wow. Have I ever told you how much I dislike heights? Yep, I'm with you. <laughs> is that why I got the short straw? It's bolted back. How did we do this? My strap ain't long enough. Ah. I need this lowered. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, extend it. Keep going. Yep. Try going up a little bit, get some pressure off. A little more. Yeah, it's probably good for now. Lower me down. I got to get an impact to take these off. It's staying. We got quite the technical setup here. Bunch of flat straps. We've managed to get it pulled out. A couple feet here. There should be a union connector. Can unbolt. There it is. That's what we need right there. Unbolt that and we'll have her free. Recorder? Yep. Well, we got it apart. It was a little challenging. We added this not that long ago, but look at this lighting. Obviously, we bent it over here so our strap wouldn't get cut when trying to take it apart, but this is how thin it is. It is like paper thin. It's supposed to be, you know, probably about that thick, and it is like a hair. She needed to be re -plighted. I wonder Oh, it is under the bend way in there. It normally wears out the most oh. on the ends. What's up? Are we ready to tip it? What? It's bent. I can't hear you guys. It's bent. It's bent? What's bent? The whole bend. This is bent? I don't know what they're talking about. There it is. I don't know what we're going to do with it. We're going to put it in the parts pile right now. That one we're going to leave on for now. Dad's getting estimates of fixing that bend. I will assume that it will cost more to fix it than what it's insured at, so they'll probably just total it, but we're waiting to hear. Have not heard yet what the adjusters... Did something hit that guard, or was it all already dented from... I think that was already dented. From previous run-ins? I think so. Literally? <laughs> I think so. Okay. What's yeah. That? You know, we maybe could save the sleeve. Yeah, the sleeve's good. That goes with this. Would and you advertise them? This hat. Everybody loves them. And they're finally back in stock. They're hard as heck to get. You know what's really cool is how but... well this one covers that one up. <laughs> Anyways, they're on our website in the link in the description. Sweating. Sweating. Hot. Brody. Sweating too. Or you can get Bulkley's from Mexico like what Brody wears. <laughs> can you imagine how boring this summer would have been, you know, if the tornado wouldn't have ruined the whole yard? Oh, that would have been just so relaxing. All right. 2,200 gallons coming your way, Brody. Oh, it's time to do it again. Time for second pass spraying. You need that valve, that valve, this switch, that switch. Open them up. And now wait. 
need uh, 37 gallons of Enlist and 28 gallons of Roundup. That's a 32 ounce per acre and a 24 ounce per acre. So the Enlist Duo, we ran out of that. That was just left over from last year. It's a product that we were unable to get this year. So we're mixing the Enlist one and the Roundup, making our own. Which works just fine as long as you put them in in the correct order and don't mix it in the same tank. Like the same inductor cone here. All right, we need six bags of AMS. 51 pounds per bag. This to be a lot of throwing. It's nice in the morning when it gets late at later in the day and hot, then it this really gets sucky. Oh, it's so loud in here. It's so loud. That's good. That's a load. That's a load. 2400. Yep. Should keep you busy for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Two hours, maybe three. He's got Road like, travel. yeah, he's got like three fields to do in this area, just smaller ones. I can go back to the farm and I can take a nap. No, I actually have to reload a spray tender. Need more chemical. You'll be busy. I'll be busy, always. So Brody was out here last night. We picked him up, just left the tractor because we're a few miles away from the farm and no need of taking it home at night. But beans are coming along very nice for conditions we planted in and it's coming. It's coming along really nice. This field is the field that had so much volunteer corn from last year. So basically because of this, previous renter had his corn go pretty flat and a lot of corn cobs that look at that the corn sprouts and we're gonna battle this all season there is going to be corn out here when we harvest just because you can kill what's growing but look at how many more there are gonna be wanting to grow throughout the season here's another one that as you can see I moved the corn cob out of the way and there's the corn plant anything like I said anything that's up already will get killed by the uh, clethidin, clethidum? I don't know, it's hard to read their spellings. That will kill it, but like I said, as it rains more and as the season goes on, they're just gonna keep growing. It is just what it is with, when your corn goes flat, it's hard to pick the cobs up and you get a lot of cob drop and then you battle it the next year. Don't look at this spot, this is kind of thin here headland compaction zone. Probably planted into big dirt lumps that no seed to soil contact around in this area here and right there. It was planted, it just didn't grow. So this will be our final pass on trying to kill weeds and kill corn. So it is at what it is after this point. We will come back with a fungicide and insecticide application uh probably in august like we did every year at that point we could put in more corn killer to kill any volunteer corn is what it's called but we'll make that judgment call when we get back down here this truck just don't fire up like it should kind of spits and sputters it's always been that way i don't know what the deal is it just it's a good thing it starts. So I've seen in the comments, how, how do you keep track of what field and what you're doing on each field? Well, this is a small part of it right here. This book has all of our fields in it. And so each page here, we've got a little map of the field that we can draw on right here, if need be. Then we have what bean variety, what the population was, the acres, and if we put soy green on, we can put that under fertilizer, chemistry. Um, basically, you got to keep track 
uh, legally also for spray records what chemicals you put out there, what the wind direction was, what the gallons per acre applied was, what the temperature was, um, other cool little notes that we'll leave in here. Um, if there was a rain that came through, maybe wash chemical off if it was sprayed late at night. We make those notes in here so that if we're coming back uh, a month later and saying, hey, how come this happened to this field? How come the weeds didn't die? How come uh, we have those notes here? And God forbid anything ever happens as far as spray drift to a neighbor right here. You know what wind direction it was. Um, luckily, we've avoided that situation for a long time, but... It does happen, and you come back to the good old book here. Actually, as they're planting them, they write on the cover here what the date it was planted. So then you just backtrack this. Every time you do a spray pass, well, you gotta start spraying where the planter started planting, generally. And you just work your way down the line, and that's how we kind of keep track. There's nothing too fancy about it. I'm sure John Deere, or my John Deere program, I'm sure has a lot of useful information which is also stored through what we enter in our computer but this is nice for the spray tender guy and works very very easy and nice and yeah it's a little how to keep track of stuff what are we into today well i drilled a hole through the top of the steel tank making it i suppose unsellable again <laughs> No, it should be fine. But putting a float in the new fracking tank? Got a float in it. Wow. But these, I wonder, Toby. Di didn't we own a clamp that's meant for the hose instead of something that's meant for a fire hose? <laughs> Look at that. Just waiting to take a chunk of meat out. Kind of wet and humid out today. <sighs> okay, turn it on. Turn it on. This is our magnificent water set up here. Hey, what's that well guy's phone number? I need to call him. Get something that pumps like 30, 40 gallons a minute. What do you think of that? Well, I like the idea, but I don't <laughs> like the... I know what that's gonna cost, so... Uh, is it a dollar? Uh, and then where to put it? Thousand dollars every... What? Well, I don't I'm know sure it'd be a 15, 20 thousand dollar investment. Let alone Maybe the more. boring of the lines on right, the Right, and yard. how do you hook it up to the shop? And... Yeah, well, maybe we could go to the lake and pump out of the lake. Oh, yeah. Wow, that looks pretty professional. Doggo, you're out dead yourself. Look at that. Very nice. Did it pass your okay? I'm sure somebody will say, oh my gosh, what, why, why? But that's the way it is. Do you think in case of future tornadoes, we have to put a bolt in these or something? How about a wooden stick? <laughs> Dad uses sticks that fall off the trees to hold down his LP covers. It works, I guess. Okay, let's go do something. So I guess there's a guy coming in a week or so to he's got a big pincher on his excavator I guess to cut up bins so that's kind of why we've been working on getting this one especially stripped we got a ton of electrical stuff here that needs to come off and then of course there's a panel screwed to it so we got to get that removed so they can cut this one up too do you think that that's safe Look at that. That looks scary. At least you only got to go about 20 feet. Well, there's that hole I could fall in, and then I'd be down in the bin floor. Brody's first comment. This is sweet. Can we use it? Where would you use it, Brody? I don't know. You know, this is actually something that I could really see being very handy in different projects we get into. You put them laser sticks yeah, they, on they here. Yeah, they had them on. On the thing there, and... You just, it controls the tilt, it controls the height, that. They have some leakage there though. Oh, need a new hose. 
So we came to uh, check out what the concrete guys are doing here. So this is what it looks like. I've never actually been this close up during this process, but this is, uh, when you got that much weight, you have to do the heavy duty foundation. There's a technical name for it that I don't remember. Do you know? Yeah. No, you don't know either. So this is, well, let's go look hang at on. That. So the concrete, when it's all said and done, will look just like this here. But as you can see right here where all the excavation has happened, this has gotten exposed. This is not supposed to be exposed. We're supposed to cover that up. We need to build gravel up, but this is what you will see. And this cement on this building here is what they are gonna pour right here. So what they came in and did was used our stake in the center of the bin, measured out to where the wall will kind of be, painted it, dug it with their skid loader, and then hand shoveled it, I believe. But this is how hard we packed it. It's like sand and it's, Brody's just so proud of his packing, it's unbelievable. So now they'll pour this and then they will come back, set up the forms that make that wall. Then they pour the actual curb wall and then they'll do the back filling back in between here and the wall and pour the flat top slab. This is pretty cool. They've been busy. It was hot today. Imagine how bad this sucked. You think he wants to do a skid loader inside? Yeah, it's supposed to rain, which is a good thing. As long as they don't come with tornadic winds again. Looks like they're gonna do double layer of rebar. And this is, what, three quarter inch? Yeah, three One quarter. inch rebar? That's in, well, can you imagine? Let's do some math and see how many pounds are in one of those. 11 million pounds in this, that bin when it's full. Well, Concrete same bin. as this one too. 11 million 200 thousand pounds. Yeah, no wonder they're putting such beefy three rod in there. So they have to do the exact same thing they're doing right there to this one, only they're gonna be in way tighter area to work in. I'm sure they're not gonna like it, but this is basically how we left that one. Just to pack the edges and then they come in, draw their line, excavate back in, and they actually, as you can see, it's below ground level. They dug back down with their skid loader, which I'm sure was fun to get everything on grade. We're just doing what we're told to do, right? Right. <laughs> Hopefully they're happy with it. You know, I'm really hoping no torrential rains come tonight and erode our pad into the re-rod that they have all set up. I haven't gotten to see it. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Did you look at it then? Yeah, we looked at it. Well, Looks hate nice. To have all them people not see it they're as doing, it's being built. They're doing a nice job. I should go over there too. <laughs> Toby, haven't seen you all day. You've been getting them kitties. You always throw your screws down Did on the ground. Did you find it? Unbelievable. With that near catastrophe avoided, we're going to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you later.